speaking to Rupert Owens. Rupert, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Nice to nice to talk. It, it's good to have you here. Now everyone knows the Judas Priest part of the story, but what's Ripper been doing since Priest? Let's lead up to where we are today. I am so busy nonstop. You know, I mean, from Priest to Ice Earth to Ingrid Malmsteen to you know this, that, and the other solo records, Beyond Fear. But you know, now I've just released three different records within a month, and the last one that just came out was a, a new revenge and you know probably the one that that was the oldest started working on that one and you know we were a band called project rock that that used to tour in, in russia and stuff and and you know thing that makes this band different is we have you know carrie kelly who at the time was in alice cooper uh james kotek scorpions ruby sarzo everybody uh, you know, Ozzy, Quiet Riot, White Snake, Dio. So we we would we did that, and then we decided to write a record. And now New Revenge is out. Yeah, we haven't got time to list all of uh, Rudy Sarzo's bands. How did uh, how did this band get together? How did it start? Well, you know, it started with Carrie and, and Carrie Kelly and James Kotek. They would do a lot of touring together with with you know with with James and the Scorpions and Carrie and Al Scooper, and then they came up with this idea. Uh, to do this and go pay, play the, the bands from our, you know, who we were in in our past. And they called me and they called Rudy and, you know, we called it Project Rock. And, you know, we'd go to Russia and play, you know, all the songs, Ozzy. And the keyboard player we had was, was Terry Zigzag and he was in Guns N' Roses for a bit. So we would play the Guns N' Roses song, you know, Priest and all this stuff, Alice Cooper and Scorpions. And it was great, you know. And then Carrie said, man, I'm going to send some originals. Let's write some originals. So, we slowly started writing originals, and it really it made it nice because instead of these other bands who always get together and make these kind of super groups and stuff, we were already kind of a group jamming and playing and you know hanging out and having a beer and dinner and and so when we started to do this, it, it felt it felt really natural. So who's doing the uh, the majority of the songwriting? Did you say? Uh, Carrie and myself did it. You know, we did a lot of the writing and. Um, uh, just kind of, uh, you know, it was just felt natural, you know. And uh, he'd send these ideas, and it was a little bit different than all the stuff that I'd done in the past. I thought it was it was great stuff. How easy is it getting this band uh, together? Are you all living in the same city? No, we're not actually. I mean, I'm uh, uh, I'm in Ohio, so I'm clear on the East Coast here, and no, you know, these guys are out in. Uh, in LA and in Orange County, California, they're all out there. So, uh, you know, it only took me to fly out that way to rehearse and do stuff. And then with Kerry, you know, obviously writing nowadays is a little bit different. He can send, just emails me the ideas and I go into my studio and play tracks down and send them back. And, I mean, the demos that we made sounded uh, as good as anything. I mean, it was amazing. The demos sounded so good. Right, let's talk about this album, uh, Enemies and Lovers. Firstly, did they have, whoever wrote this song, did they have anyone particular in mind when they wrote Enemies and Lovers? Well, I think it's just, you know, really it's... It sounds very personal. Yeah, it's, you know, that's what's funny how you can write stuff and it's not always personal. Uh, but the key is to make it sound personal. You know, sometimes it is. You know what's funny? The ones you want to make sound personal sometimes, you change it so people don't actually get it. <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't know if I want them to know I'm singing about them. Let me make it sound like it's more like a passive-aggressive song or something. Who's doing backup vocals? They sound really good. You know, I do the majority or a lot of them, but Carrie, uh, Carrie you, know, you know, if we wanted to sound different, if it was a like a an answer back or something, Carrie would do do a lot of vocals with that and then all the harmonies and stuff are always me now the albums just came out can you tell us a bit more about it um how long did it take you to record where did you record it how did you go with um east coast west coast thing okay we would slowly write this record we would slowly do it he'd send me files and carrie and i would write it uh and i think that we already felt comfortable together from touring so we would do it you know then when we finally had all the demos written, which the demos sounded just as good as uh, as a you know regular uh, record. I thought uh, then you know Carrie started to you know record the music out there. Then I flew out to L.A. and recorded my vocals, 
the main vocals out there when it was all done. And, uh, you know, and there it was. You know, we finally had a record. Probably a year or so ago, we kind of finished it, and, and it was there, ready to go. What's the plan now? Um, more touring. Obviously, you're already comfortable as a um, live band. It's not like you've just been slapped together. So um, what's the plan now? That is the plan. The plan is to try to get touring together. Again, we're all busy. I mean, I leave tomorrow for South America for a solo tour, and we're all kind of busy with other stuff, but um, they, we're, we're looking at our schedules now and seeing where we could put a, uh, a run of shows together. So that's, that's the plan, to try to, to try to figure out where we can do it. How's the reaction been to the album so far? I liked it right from the start, but it, it's grown it's grown on me. It's a grower. So um, how's the reaction been so far? It's been great. I mean, you know, it's funny because I knew people would like it because my heavy metal friends who were either in technical kind of heavy metal or whatever, they, they heard it and were like, man, that thing is, that is an awesome record. It's really good. They were like, I can't wait for you to release that because that thing is great. So it's been it's been a, a really good uh, received record. Unless somebody's into really super heavy music and they're like, man, that's too mellow for me. I, okay, I understand. But uh, it's, been, uh, it's been one of the best received records I've put out, really. Tell us about the film clip for The Way. Now, people are going to look at that. If they haven't read up on it, they're going to look at that and say, that's not Rudy Sazo. What's the deal there? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is, Rudy was on the record. Rudy was in it, and Rudy was on the record. But after... We just, when we went to film the video and we were going to put the record out, Rudy was like, listen, I'm just swamped. You know, I don't even have time. Because what happens is you do a new project like this, a new band, there's not going to be any money coming in from it. I mean, that's just a given. You're doing it. We want to get it out because we love it. And when you have other commitments, it's hard to leave your other commitments to go do something because, you know, you got to pay bills. So Rudy was like, my schedule's swamped right now and I just can't do it. So we decided, all right, well, Let's call Phil. We're friends with Phil and see if he wanted to do the video. And then he said, you know what? I think maybe we'll just go further because Rudy just doesn't have time. So, you know, people keep saying it says Rudy and that's Phil. Like when we talked to people, I said, yeah, but no, it says Rudy's on the record. You know, we did a record with Rudy and this was the thing. And, and then all of a sudden, after we started doing the first run of press, that's when Rudy was like, man, I'm, I just, I'm sorry. I, I'm swamped. I'm, I have obligations. I can't get out of it. And listen, you don't find anybody nicer than Rudy Sarza. So that's the funniest thing of all. It's like, all right, you know, we're all like, okay, Rudy, you know, because he's just, he's just a great guy. One question, if I've got time, about, uh, about your time with Priest. Just looking back on your time with Priest, how do you look back on it? What sort of memories have you got from those days? Oh, amazing. Great memories, great friends. Uh, I had the time of my life. You know, they opened up all the doors for me to do what I do now. Uh, they... Um, just great guys. I had so much fun in, in my time with Jesus Priest, you know. And I, I you know, I, I have nothing ever bad to say about it. It was just amazing. Hmm. It genuinely looked like you were having the time of your life and couldn't believe that Judas Priest was on the same stage as you. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what the thing was. We were friends. I mean, I'd never been in the band that I, I was so much friends with. It's weird because when I first walked in there, I was, you know, I realized them. In the 80s, when I when I was younger, they were my my only thing I listened to in the 80s. You know, obviously this is 96, so I wasn't quite the stalking fan at that time. But we became friends right away. You know, we were family right away, and it was I've never been like that. We did everything together, so um, yeah, it was just a great time. Right, Ripper Owens, thanks for talking to me. Your new album, A New Revenge, the album's called Enemies and Lovers, out now. I love it. All the best with it, and I hope uh, schedules work and you can get a good tour and a good run of dates with it. Thanks for taking the uh, time to talk to me today. Thank you. Anytime. You got my phone number? Call me anytime and we'll do it again.